Longhorn. They will have the advantage with length over Central Michigan as that's one over Rob Montgomery. Longhorn's last time out. A 60 to 50 win over Texas A&M as that rivalry was renewed up in Fort Worth. Gerald Liddell gets into the paint, loses his footing, and that's going to be an early turnover. Pressure Texas, try to force Texas to play fast, and they will look to get shots up. You will not see any late clock, or rarely see late clock situations with Central Michigan. They're looking to score and score quickly. They want to get to the three-point shot like that from Dallas Morgan. Try to force Texas to play fast, and they will look to get shots up. You will not see any late clock, or rarely see late who leads with 30 and if they don't get the three-point shot they want to get to the free throw line well and that's huge for dallas he had a 0 for game here recently so getting out of the gate with a three for him will build some early confidence he went 0 for 12 in the loss of three-point shot they want to get to the free throw line well and that's huge for dallas he had a 0 for game here recently so getting out of the gate with three for him will build some early confidence he went 0 for 12 in the loss at Valpo. Turnover, Devontae Lane forced it up in Coleman, comes down with it. Turnover, Devontae Lane forced it up in Coleman, comes down with it. Hesitation drive, awkward finish, but it goes. We got, we got to talk about Coleman's number. They've been sick of late. He's so efficient offensively this season. Did not have a great game, though with ball security in that win against A&M. This is Montgomery. He was in the paint too long, and that's a three-second violation. He's throwing him because he knows what he can bring. The fact that he averages over 34 minutes a night shows you how much he trusts this young man and how much he believes in him and wants him to run this program. Season high, six turnovers for him in that win against the Aggies. Going baseline, good find to Liddell for three. Wide right. Yeah, and those turnovers are in character. On good find to Liddell for three. Wide right. Yeah, and those turnovers are uncharacteristic. He had two games this season where he had no turnovers at all. It's just been a magnificent season for Coleman. And yeah, they were working out the first climber in practice yesterday. Every time there was a live ball turnover, guys went to the first climber. As Montgomery hits down the three-point shot. Well, that opened things up for Montgomery. He's a unique big. He can play on the perimeter and around the basket. So he'll leave things open offensively for Central Michigan because he can play so far away from the basket. Here's Ramey to Fedris. And Fedris stays hot. Chase Fedris in 4 of 11 from outside. Well, the head is clear, clearly. And with not having school right now, I think will bode well for Jace Fredericks. Montgomery hit it and fouled. 8% from the free throw line. Keno Davis said that it, Keno Davis said that in some ways Central Michigan has been ahead of the curve in terms of analytics. They were going with an emphasis on three-point shooting and getting to the free throw line long before most college programs were. As that's back to back from Fredericks. Guarding three-point shooters early. A switch there from Liddell. And Texas can switch just about at anything because they're so long and athletic on the perimeter. Dallas Morgan, too much on the three. Coleman, long and athletic on the perimeter. Dallas Morgan, too much on the three. Coleman comes down, he's setting up Ramey. Pull up. In and out. And Central Michigan. Pull up. In and out. And Central Michigan will take the early shot. They want to play fast. Texas is going to have to control things on the offensive end. And this is their go-to guy. As Sims perhaps is called for foul. In little spaces and create offense for himself right around the back, around the rim all day long. And he's very crafty there. So already a win for the Chippewas. A win for the Chippewas as McKay goes to the line, hits two. And what was the second foul for Sims? So he's now on the bench of the top shot blockers by the Longhorns. So this plays in the CMU's hands. Andrew Jones checking in as well as Roy's head. Well, it plays into Texas's hands too because they typically play. <laughs> Coleman. Like that with Coleman with the big girl on the floor. You got four guards. Liddell's a little bit of a wing and one big in ham. So a trifecta of threes early on for the Longhorns. Looking good with the outside stroke. DeLeo harassed by Coleman. 
and that's off of McKay. It will be over 50% from beyond the arc. Breakout junior season for Matt Coleman as Kai Jones checks in. Talk about breaking out. He's on the verge of doing that. Coleman's trying to find him. Baseline, but instead, he's on the verge of doing that. Coleman's trying to find him. Baseline, but instead, throws it right to Broadway. Broadway gets it back. Contact. No whistle. Broadway gets it back. Contact. No whistle. That was one of those careless turnovers, though, that Chaka's going to harp on is... Ham loses it. Careless turnovers, though, that Chaka is going to harp on is Ham loses it. Run out there. Looked like contact from Jones. They didn't call it initially. Be a little uncluttered, and you can focus just on basketball. It certainly can. Combination of that, not only from the AM game, but here in the early start today against Central Michigan for Fedrix. Guy Jones fighting for that. Combination of that, not only from the AM game, but. Here in the early start today against Central Michigan for Fedrix. Kai Jones fighting for that rebound, but right to the hands of Broadway. Culmination of that, not only from the AM game, but here in the early start today against Central Michigan for Fedrix. Kai Jones fighting for that rebound, but right to the hands of Broadway. Scooped up, rejected by Andrew Jones. To the hands of Broadway. Scooped up, rejected by Andrew Jones. Central Michigan is so aggressive on either end of the floor. Coleman, that beautiful lefty stroke, too strong. Aggressive on either end of the floor. Coleman, that beautiful lefty stroke, too strong. Chippewas want to run. Boy, they forced Texas into a run and gun game so far today. It's goal to me. Yeah, as Ham hit that rim, as he was, it looked like he was trying to block the shot, and Hand ended up on the rim. You know, Ham has a snafu or two. Probably every game, and that's an example of there's no reason. I mean, you can forget where you are, but there's no reason to grab the rim, especially if you're going to come down on your feet. Will Baker checks in, freshman from Westlake. Sets the screen for Coleman. He comes off pulling the trigger. That's well short. Jones got a shot clock. You got to look. Sets the screen for Coleman. He comes off pulling the trigger. That's well short. Jones got a shot clock. You got to look. Sets the screen for Coleman. He comes off pulling the trigger. That's well short. Jones got a shot clock. You got to look at down to three. Coleman doesn't recognize. Does Baker? He got it off. He missed the shot. This goes out for Baker. He got a time bomb. He had to get up. This is a fine ball player who struggled here early. And it's, a, it's exacerbated into his game, but he is a fine ball player and will be very good for these Texas Longhorns once he gets it going. Now 316 in his career from the field, but that miss misleading. Jones, good defense on Winston, up and under, and almost a three-point play. And McKay's shooting percentage in 63%. Winston showed you a perfect who is at the free throw line. He's looking for people to find when that defense collapses. Chippewas came into this matchup with 106 more free throws made than opponents this season. The number one margin in college basketball. Do a lot of things well offensively. Yeah, they really try to look for inches in ways to score, and the free throw line is a perfect example of Donovan that. Donovan Williams, the freshman. Baker, the rebound. Oh, and cannot get it to go, but we'll go to the chance in ways to score, and the free throw line is a perfect example of Donovan that. Donovan Williams, the freshman. Baker, the rebound. Oh, and cannot get it to go, but we'll go to the chance. Two, why are you, you don't need protection of the glass. All you need <laughs> is you and side. Then the numbers suggest right now with Baker. Well, it is in that when you're a freshman, you're not going to get the kind of minutes you correct. So he's working <laughs> with not a lot of... A lot of runway to get his game going in the way he can do it. Lane, nice drive through. Lane, nice drive through. Two Texas defenders. The seven-point lead for the Chippewas. And we just talked about it. What they do, they get to the rim. Texas has to move their feet defensively. Good defense there by DeLeo on Courtney Rainey. In this score, Lowell. 
Well, we've seen some other programs early on in non-conference play come into the Irwin Center, and they've already played big-time competition as the Leo has called for the trouble. Central Michigan, it's been a big step up that Keno Davis talked to me about before the start of the game. They haven't seen length and athleticism like this. Yeah, and I'm glad you made that point, Lowell, because some of these numbers are false in terms of the level of competition. As Fevers, there, you just... Let me Bruce, on the other end, those guys are catch-and-shoot guys. You see what happens when they get outside of their envelope. Lane using the body on Coleman. It's short. And it's off Texas, so it will stay with the Valpos of the world. And Texas has done quite well against the lower-level teams this year. Good battle inside, and that's going to be waved off. The travel on Kevin against D1 competition, NCAA competition. This is the category they rank number uh, the top 10 in, and, and that's quite balanced when you talk about scoring, getting to the line, and steals as well. Yeah, it, it, very impressive, and I don't want to take anything away from them, but this, in their conference, they can do, they can play this way. The big three have not had the type of impact on winning that they had against lower level teams, so this is a good test for them coming in here to Texas, but so far, <laughs> Their run and gun has worked quite well. Harden-esque on the step back. Jones. Their run and gun has worked quite well. Harden-esque on the step back. Jones. Elevates. Whoa, he is springy whoa, whoa. to say the least. Did I hear you say Harden? I, I said Harden-esque move. I, I said Harden-esque move. It was not Harden-esque move. So he ain't dropping 50. <laughs> Laying off his foot. Donovan Williams falls on him. And that's going to be a travel call again on McKay. That has to be careful with low with live ball turnovers because those turn into transition baskets for Central Michigan. Not even halfway through the first half, and you saw that shot from the bench. Sims and Jones both on the bench with two fouls, talking about second leading scorer and leading rebounder. And Central Michigan not giving Texas a steady diet. It looks like they've gone to a zone going to force Texas to look at something different defensively. Kai Jones nearly lost the handle. To a zone going to force Texas to look at something different defensively. Kai Jones nearly lost the handle. And this is the shot. The Leo's been quiet. Not anymore. Not anymore. The Leo can really get going. He's one of the big three, if you will, for Central Michigan. Also has some NBA in his blood in that his uncle, Tony DeLeo, works for the Wizards and coach. Also has some NBA in his blood in that his uncle, Tony DeLeo, works for the Wizards and coach. Because he can really knock it down. There's another part of the DeLeo family. Pops. This is Dan Frank. Frank. On hand to watch. That one is left short by DeLeo. Leo. And with the scoring ability of the Chippewas, playing with confidence, as that one is nearly just carelessly thrown away by Ramey. Texas cannot afford this early deficit to grow. Nice hesitation. Oh, Jones out of control. He wants to throw it down, an offensive foul. At the free throw line and knock down the easy jump shot in the middle of the lane. So with Jones picking up his second foul, Sims is forced to come in with two fouls. Tough shot, no foul. Sims is forced to come in with two fouls. Tough shot, no good by Montgomery. Hesitation by Coleman. Pull up. Great shot. Defense, he took that. Great shot. Defense, he took. That's a great example of what you do. The defense did not stop the ball. Going the other way is McKay. This is great pace for Central Michigan. <laughs> Makes, misses, steals, turnovers, doesn't matter. They're pushing pace. P squared, if you will. P squared. P squared. Push pace. Flip down. Point blank. Point blank. Go ahead. Liddell with the huge tease. When he played his first game of the season against Purdue, went off for 14 points. He has 12 total in the last four. Yeah, these are still young minutes for him. He didn't play a lot his freshman year. Ooh, nice touch wow. by DeLeo. Well, if you're not going to help, look, DeLeo has the length to get in range and just shoot the nice little turnaround. Had one Division II offer out of high school.
As Ramey turns the corner, McKay, their top threat offensively, they score. As Ramey turns the corner, McKay, their top threat offensively and defensively, affects that shot. Lane, using that body, initiates 77% on the season. That will drop that mark. Coming up after this, Keno Davis, the former head coach of the Providence season at Drake. The 07-08 campaign, Drake went 28-5, and won the Missouri Valley for the first time since 1971. Yeah, and took over for his dad. I mean, he comes through a lineage or from a lineage of great basketball. Great touch there, Sims. Coach, Coach Davis's dad had a great career in Iowa with great players like B.J. Armstrong, Roy Marble. DeLeo off the deflection from February. Dr. Tom Davis, 1987 National Coach of the Year with the Hawkeyes. Jones back in the game with two fouls. Coleman is open. Will swing it to Febris. Three point is good. And Febris hot three for three from distance. Well, he's just a different player than he was. Febris is his first six or seven games of the season. He's really playing with a clear head in that basket. I'm sure it looks like an ocean now. Texas with the switch here. But Central Michigan so aggressive at every position. Too aggressive there is Winston. Inside the Irwin Center. Central Michigan with a 29-23 lead over Texas. The highest scoring team in America, the Chippewas. Against the number 18 scoring defense in D1, the Longhorns. Foul number one. Febris, three for three from outside. Texas has a lot of minor adversity they've got to overcome here early in this game, namely turnovers and foul trouble. Jones and Sims on the court, each with two fouls as Jones will go to the line. Things settled down for Jones to go to the line. Well, we're going to get in early. The Texas Athletics Hall of Fame, Fonzie Whitaker, Manuel Acho. So a four-point game. DeLeo trying to stay hot, and he does. Unlimited range. David DeLeo. Well, it's all about in half court high screen and rolls are picking and popping. Texas is going to have to stay attached to their bigs. The Central Michigan bigs can shoot the ball, and they do have the green light. with the drive finds Coleman and Texas staying hot from out hot from outside is Coleman knocked that down right before the buzzer well just called Coleman the, the savior that was a huge three and the Central Michigan looks like they are seeking out a little offensive separation in terms of the score Coleman already in double digits after that three ball a mismatch. Good. Feed inside. Montgomery with the finish. Well, this started with you, Texas and Central Michigan found the mismatch, which left Ramey under the basket with a big. Broadway leaving it all on the floor. Nearly picked that one off. Liddell, that's going to be offensive. In the man they're guarding in the basket, you saw an example of it there. And with Central Michigan, defensive field goal percentage isn't great. As DeLeo knocks that one down. The ones in the past, they do play defense. And the number that stands out, 21st nationally, and four turnovers per game. Nearly another one by Broadway. Yeah, Texas very careless with the ball. Wow, contact. Coleman goes down. Contact. Coleman goes down into the camera. Boy, but look how quick they get it out and get right back into it offensively. You better guard the little quickly. Sort of typical heat check. Broadway, though, with the follow and the finish. And the bump into it offensively. You better guard the little quickly. Sort of typical heat check. Broadway, though, with the follow and the finish. And the bump. I mean, you have to appreciate these guys are counterpunchers. With Texas, when they score, they've got to get back defensively quickly because. Central Michigan is looking to get the ball up 
at a ridiculously quick pace. And not only get it up court, Lowell, looking to get it up court and score. Obviously, 50 points in the entire game last time out. Yeah, more size with AM than what Central Michigan has. They have to play this way. They just don't have the size of some of these power five schools like an AM. They do it and do it well. This translates extremely well into the into the MAC, their conference. Febris. First miss from outside. That's going to be a foul against Central Michigan. Febris. First miss from outside. That's going to be a foul against Central Michigan. He's at home against quote unquote lesser competition. Texas has been slow starters. Does this one feel a little different though when you consider how CMU is playing? Yeah, what feels different is Central Michigan is imposing a style of play that Texas is not used to and has not played against them. He said, no, we're going to come in here and impose our will. We're going to do what we do and push tempo and pressure on the defensive end. And that's what we're seeing today, Lowell. Don't have the size that Texas does, but impressed by how physical they play. Coleman, the lead to Sims. He's fouled, so he'll go to... And I tried to force Coach Davis in the tell how to win in either way and let the defense dictate what they can get done offensively by creating those internal works. Sims has been a different guy at the line this season, but that looked like vintage Jericho from early in his career as he missed both. I mean, is this foul going to be on? Is that number three and having fun? <laughs> well, when you're playing this well, it makes you feel a little more laid back, yeah. does it not? Yeah, absolutely. It, it it does. And you you're scoring and watching the ball go through the basket. Febris, that's been his spot, gives it up, feeds Ham. Three Ham seconds. harassed and a travel call. Yeah, a travel and a three because he's finding scoring positions on the floor and getting cleaner looks than you would like for a guy of his caliber. Five and seven from the field. It's Montgomery, his wingman in this game with nine points with foot movement around the basket here in the first half. Such a Michigan team that had to reload, retool the roster after losing Larry Austin Jr. and Sean Roundtree Jr. The backcourt last year. Six newcomers in all. And there's a foul on McKay on Jones. 96 free throws on the season coming into this game versus 200 ways that Central Michigan gets points either at the line at the emphasis on scoring and all the possible ways you can score and if you showed me the personnel and said which one of these groups has the higher free throw number I would say Texas yeah is that's a, correct a longer more athletic team and with solid defense there on Montgomery but what it speaks to long Average double figures yeah. in scoring versus Six two with for at Texas. least nine. Correct. I mean, so all of that bodes well for a team that's trying to score baskets. If Texas has a run here in the final 245. And that will stay with Longhorns. Yeah, I'll tell you what they're doing. And knockdowns, if you will, as we saw there, are incredibly beneficial defensively. And there's Montgomery. And knockdowns, if you will, as we saw there, are incredibly beneficial defensively. And there's Montgomery with the theft and throw down. Rob Montgomery. Juco transfer from Indian Hills. Yeah, just run. We've seen that a few times tonight in terms of getting right in the passing lane. Texas has to do a better job. The passer and the receiver going to meet the ball and or considering bounce passes. Montgomery and DeLeo, the big two at the moment for the Chippewas. Still trying to get McKay and Morgan going. Look at DeLeo, loaded up. Ham with the follow. They're going to wipe this away. So that's in the cellar. DeLeo, quick move. Fedris wow. stays with it for the no. moment. Then gets away. <laughs> oh, man. That was impressive there. Broadway, you mentioned the deflections. He's been very active there. Oh, good pump fake. And the finish. Federers. Out. <laughs> yeah. You come out of the holidays and may not be where you want to be, but you got to finish the season strong. Utah also had a chance to be in the college football playoff matchup, but they're losing in the Pac-12 championship game, and there's free throw 
Defense is back and set. And McKay does miss. And Halls to join his team. McKay as impressive of a versatile player that you will see on the mid-major level. There is one of those fouls on the team. McKay as impressive of a versatile player that you will see on the mid-major level. There is one of those fouls. I mean, makes the front end. Being more bigs. So I think when they play small, it almost plays right into the hands of the Chippewa. Split for Waddell into the final minute of the first half. CMU with a 42-36 lead, looking for Montgomery. Couldn't CMU with a 42-36 lead, looking for Montgomery. Couldn't handle it. Liddell full head of steam. Bad shot. Wow. I love Closer to the rim so he can finish. And he has the length and the ability to do that. Caught Lance as he was heading out. To catch up with Shaka Smart. Which he will do at the conclusion of this first half. Montgomery passes up the three. Ramey tried to take it away. Left short. Liddell to him. Passes up the three. Ramey tried to take it away, left short. Liddell to him. Liddell goes down. Nice bounce pass. As Royce Ham, five in the first half. Leading scoring team in America with 42 overall. So about a two second differential here. As Coleman will let the clock wind down. Coleman and Febris both with 12. Now with five on the shot clock. Not going to get this one off. Febris does not get this shot off. Poor execution by... DeLeo and Morgan, the top two three-point threats on the court. DeLeo will heave it up. And too strong. Also some of the success inside for the Chippewas because in the first half, Kai Jones... Jericho Sims in foul trouble. Andrew Jones joins him in that department as well. McKay opens up to the paint to emphasize your point. That's right. Under, they're, they're as good as anyone. I played for a great coach like this in Tom Penders. Their style reminds me of what he pushed, which was emphasis on offense, pressure defensively, gets steals, makes misses, turnovers. Doesn't matter. We are going to try to score the ball. McKay has been the leading scorer for CMU as DeLeo with the turnover. Bad for the ball. McKay has been the leading scorer for CMU as DeLeo with the turnover. Bad pass. But it's really been DeLeo and Montgomery leading the charge as that was from way deep. Montgomery offensive board. Gets it back. But it's really been DeLeo and Montgomery leading the charge as that was from way deep. Montgomery offensive board. Gets it back. But it's really been DeLeo and Montgomery leading the charge as that was from way deep. Montgomery offensive board. Gets it back. With 13 on the shot clock. If they can get McKay going, look out. Well, yeah, and it's equal opportunity. I, talking to Coach Davis, it really it doesn't matter to him who scores. Of course, they want to be efficient and make them, but it's as important that they all get looks offensively. That's nice foul. Number two on lane. Remy thinking and one all right today. Just with two points. Bring him up to three. As a sophomore. And he, he started off early, Ramey, but he just hasn't been able to as a sophomore. And he, he started off early, Ramey, but he just hasn't been able to find his groove thus far. Febris goes down. McKay swings it over his shoulder wow. and somehow <laughs> finds a man. Air ball, McCumber. Air ball, McCumber. Febris with four first half threes. We've got a mismatch over here. Ham off his board. 
McKay with contact, or was it Lane? Well, got a mismatch over here. Ham off is a board. McKay with contact, or was it Lane? Well, you got Ham starting the second half. Something Texas didn't use those and use that and slow the game down a little bit and force the Chippewa court basketball. Sims with three fouls, but going deeper than that, why do you think Shaka made that move? W what move? To not start him? Yeah, to have him in there. Well, because he's going to want Sims to finish the game. You don't want to give up those that foul trouble here early in the second half. You don't want to give up those that foul trouble here early in the second half. Really physical game. Contact with Montgomery. Coleman lost it, but Texas will keep it. Deep into the bench and not lose a lot of ta a lot of talent. And he's got to play 8, 9, 10 into his bench. So many ways this Texas ball club can play. And you see the recruiting rankings for Shaka Smart consistently in the top 20. Yeah, I mean, I think this has gone unnoticed for Shaka as his recruiting has been as good as anyone in the nation he's had. I think that's better for Shaka. It's, I think it's been a bit of a distraction for this program each season when they've got a one and done on their roster. You're saying Jackson Hayes is a distraction? Well, he, uh, in a positive Allen's way. A in a positive way, absolutely. Mo the distraction. Absolutely, and one of the reasons, Law, is because sometimes you have to go to those guys and they aren't ready to be, quote-unquote, the man. Montgomery there, whistled for the... Six rebounds, a career high for Royce Sam. Takes advantage. You don't want to grab the rim and, <laughs> and give up easy baskets or free throws, and Ham can do that. He's big enough and strong enough. DeLeo once again trying to shake free from Febris. Broadway has been quiet. Febris with the physical... Febris. Broadway has been quiet. Everest with a physical rebound. Here's Andrew Jones from the corner. Leaves it short. Or well, you can see that was. Here's Andrew Jones from the corner. Leaves it short. Or well, you can see that was short coming off his hand. DeLeo. No. Ham, yes. DeLeo. No. Ham, yes. Run out to Andrew Jones. Jones, Ham with the follow. Run out to Andrew Jones. Jones, Ham with the follow. Ham with the follow. Ain't taking that one away from him. In McKay out of control. Start here in the second half for Texas. Taking advantage of these minutes. And Coach Smart is giving him, giving the... Jericho is having foul trouble. Ramey. Ramey? Ramey! Hits from outside for the first time. And it's a perfect example of momentum being infectious. And rejection. Of momentum being infectious. And rejection. Texas trying to take the lead. Texas women's basketball presented by Wells Fargo coming up on LHN. Lord Galindo here with Lance Blanks. Texas has not led today, and they will not take the lead on this. Offensive foul. He's got to move his feet if he's trying to create a little post position. 15 turnovers for the Longhorns. Broadway lost the handle found a niche in terms of getting stopped. We saw it earlier with the charge. They're moving their feet, staying in front of people, and guarding them early. Wow. Broadway sold that. That, as you mentioned, forced the official to have to make a call there. 16 turnovers. A season high for the Longhorns. They still are on an 8-zip run. Aggressive drive. Chippewas cannot finish. His hand has Aggressive drive. Chippewas cannot finish. His hand has it. And that's going to be Chippewas. Fast, you can be quick, but don't rush to a point where you give that ball 
right back to the opponent. Broadway went flying again, this time into his own bench. This is Deshaun Winston running the point with the Chippewas. And I think when Winston's running it versus Lane, it plays to Texas' advantage because he's not as aggressive about looking to get shots up. He's looking to get it to people in scoring position versus scoring himself. Eight on the shot clock, inside feed, Montgomery, no, get it out! Feathers had the block, but there's a whistle for the free throw line. And low, there are a lot of games, David, yesterday, he is not going to relent or wane from their style of play. They're going to, from their style of play, they're going to push the pressure for 40 minutes. Got to get DeLeo back, finding his stroke from outside. Here you see, it's like a zone. Back to Fedris, no look. It's like a zone. Back to Fedris, no look. It's like a zone. Back to Fedris, no look. Sims, see ya. First lead to the Longhorns. Well, Texas, anytime they can get that, it really plays in their hands. Central Mexican just doesn't have the length and size and athleticism around the rim like Texas does. Broadway trying to get the corner. And that's going to go. He handles the ball the most for Texas. And he has been the pillar for this ball club. Rattling at home is Dallas. The Chippewas leader have made threes. Knocks out one down second time tonight. And every time they put one up, I look at Coach Yaklich. Jones for rebuttal! Boy, this is just a I can do it better than you <laughs> style of offense for either team. Texas matching the offensive pressure. And travel on the cover better than Jones was his ability to get him up and get him up quickly knocks down the three to counter punch. Central Michigan and we've seen Texas at times whether by design or just getting into that competitive spirit It almost seems like they play the opposition's game And with Central Michigan being a three-point shooting team Texas has matched that but unlike the pass they're hitting those shots They're knocking them down to Texas has matched that but unlike the pass they're hitting those shots They're knocking them down toe for toe Winston Finds Morgan, and Morgan finds his stroke. Real Estate has got some heat under the floor. These shooters are finding it with the quickness. The Leo back. And is that foul number four on Andrew Jones? It is. Lane, who is aggressive about looking to score and get to the basket. Texas is in an extremely vulnerable situation, probably most vulnerable that they've been in in a game this season. Good leave. McKay back to Montgomery three seconds. Yeah. Gotta be That's Montgomery. Team Texas in tight games, but back to your comment This is part of the reason why it is a concern is Kai Jones gets it Is that the scouting? Kai Jones gets it. Is that the scouting report? But right back at you come on now so bring it if you can do it I can do it a little bit better I'm having a blast. <laughs> it looks like these guys, too, are having a ton of fun in this battle with coaches who've given them the green light. McKay, the SWAT, with a consistency of taking and making big-time three-point shots, as Kai Jones just did there. Average with eight made threes. Texas, above their average with nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah, and what, what we've seen here in this game, coming out of the half, Texas took their game up to another level, namely defensively. Typically, schools at a MAC level can't match a Power 5 school just because of talent and otherwise. Today, Central Michigan has said, we're going to match that intensity and take our game to a new level. Wow. And we're seeing it. With, we're going to match that intensity and take our game to a new level. Wow. And we're seeing it with... The blow by and Broadway was there after the miss. They have been relentless on their attacks to the paint. Sims tough angle gives it to drop. And an easy jump hook for Jericho. Now one for five for the free throw line.
Jump hook for Jericho. Now one for five from the free throw line. Deep three. Wow. From Dallas for Morgan. And that's going to be Texas basketball. They've got to take and make shots like the one you saw just there from 35 feet. Six, seven feet from beyond the arc, if not further for Morgan. Chippewa's team that was predicted to finish fourth in the Mac West after a second place finish a season ago. Roll inside to Sims, swatted away. Wow. Heads up play by Dallas Morgan. The go. Roll inside to Sims, swatted away. Wow. Heads up play by Dallas Morgan. Well, earlier in this game, that was a foul. There you saw the hands. He Jericho's got to be much stronger with that ball. DeLeo for three delivers. This guy will go down by the time the season is done. As the most prolific three-point shooter in Central Michigan history. He's got three today. And he struggled a little bit earlier this season, a couple of games on the road, but not today. He's extremely comfortable from beyond the arc. And they want to see Jericho Sims inside and it's working. They want to see Jericho Sims inside and it's working. Yeah, they're not bringing any help, so Texas can likely get this pretty much any time they want. You see Texas continues to go to it and feed the big fella under the basket. The Leo's got moves, got handles. Look at that. The Leo's got moves, got handles. Look at that. Not the finish, though. No. Fabris again. Fabris. Fabris with his fifth three pointer of the day. Ninth in the past two games. Yeah, he's back. I mean, he's extremely comfortable. He's so much better of a shooter when the ball is passed to him in rhythm. And one for Kevin Hamlet. He's done. It was a heart-to-heart -heart you guys were having in the tunnel. On his way out, cannot convert the three-point play. It's a one-point lead for the Chippewas. Nine minutes to play. Good ball movement. The swing to Fedras. Kai Jones the rebound. It's to play. Good ball movement. The swing to Fedras. Kai Jones the rebound. It's to play. Good ball movement. The swing to Fedras. Kai Jones the rebound. You got to finish the defensive possession with the rebound. Sims trying to take Hamlet off the dribble, and it's off Jericho. Up, road trip to Providence, and then back on Longhorn Network. Shock of the guys taking on high point the final game before Big 12 play. You'll see it here on LA Chin. Lane. Coleman took it away from him. You'll see it here on LA Chin. Lane. Coleman took it away from him. Crafty hands there. Quick hands. Fedris, the nice dish, and it's going to send Sims to the free throw today. One for six now for the free throw. Manufacture a ton of offense. We talk about the size. Our producer, Pat Lowry. Olympe Lane today. Remember Javorski Lane for Texas A&M? He used to run over dudes back in the day. That's right. Javorski Lane's built a little bit like that. Yeah. That's a travel. That is a travel. Talked about character. I mean, he's got a good group of people. And that's not only important in your recruiting and your program, but it shows up on the basketball court as well. Fabris, why not? What? Fabris, why not? Number six in a three-point lead for the Horns. And he ends up... What? Fabris, why not? Number six in a three-point lead for the Horns. And he ends up with it on the other end. Well, the lane effect. Lane goes to the bench. Give it and to look him. what happens. Ramey combined coming into this game, shoot 30% from the floor, whereas Coleman and Jones are from the three, whereas Jones and Coleman shoot 42%. You can't guard the numbers. You've got to guard human beings, and Febris has cleared his mind. 12 2 run. In this second half surge, it's been Sims and Febris.
Lane using the physicality. Sims just taller. Down to the deck is Burrell. Boy, that play there. And Febris. Lane using the physicality. Sims just taller. Down to the deck is Burrell. Boy, that play there. I've had 12 points. The first 23 after half. Febris. Also, DeLeo kind of did it to himself in that what he was doing in the first half. This in the first half is certainly very difficult to extend into the second half and sustain. But also low. There's uh, over seven minutes left in this oh, game, yeah. so it's a lot of basketball to be played. Here's McKay, who has been slow, muscling against Febris, and one. Got to think of their guards almost like bigs in some instances because they get a lot done around them. Yeah, I mean, he it takes high percentage shots. He knows who he is. He doesn't come outside of that, that being McKay. Jones with four fouls. Coleman, Febris, and Sims now with three. Ready into the paint. The pass. Yeah, the pass was off to yep. Coleman. That pass, that just... Into the paint. The pass. Yeah, the pass was off to yep. Coleman. That pass, that just shows you how important it is to hit someone on time and on target. Winston on Coleman. Big yeah. contact! And one! Sims hit four fouls. <laughs> Do you take him out or keep him in? I'll shock him into that call. Hammond. Kai Jones comes in. So now it is Andrew Jones and Jericho Sims with four fouls each. Coleman and Febris not exactly sitting pretty as Ramey tries to get free. Yeah, I mean, it's like the Texas is in a car that you don't want to run out of gas. Uh, there's still plenty of fuel in the tank. Uh, there's still plenty of fuel in the tank for Courtney Ramey. Well, Ramey has struggled, but he's surely been timely all season long, making free throws and big plays down the stretch in multiple games. A gamer, to yeah. say the least. The dog, they will tell you on this Texas team, non-stop effort and energy. Six minutes left. Oh, nice hesitation move. Oh. Okay, gets free. Kai Jones. Now they're going to count this one. Ooh. But sometimes these guys are a little more athletic than what the officials are able to call. Third Texas goal, 10. Two defensively, one on offense. Four point lead for the Longhorns. And they're switching everything here on the perimeter. The Chippewas are. The Fabrics just can't take and hit threes, apparently. At the first of his career earlier today. Manny Acho, join me on set. A couple of National Signing Day. Two big ones there. National Signing Day. Two big ones there for Royce Ham. Yeah, nice to see him. Those are the little things that loom large, especially down the stretch in a game like this. Making free throws. 25 trips to the line. And Dalia stepped out of bounds. We've called. Sluggish in the first half. Find a way to turn it on in the second. Yeah, and that sluggishness was created by the Chippewas' style of play, I thought. I thought they did a great job of dictating the pace of the game. Randy wants it. Randy got it. Why not? He's got 12 points. The three-point barrage continues. Yeah, and again, my point about statistics lying to you because he hadn't shot well from the beyond the arc today. Both he and Febris have been macking to you because he hadn't shot well from the beyond the arc today. Both he and Febris have been magnificent. Earmarking that because it was a turning point of sorts. Does Central Michigan have anything left in the tank? That's the question here. Question here. As Texas extends the lead to 11 with 445 here to play in the second half. And Texas has doubled up CMU three-pointers in the second half. The defense has picked up as Ray Lane went out at one point and Winston came in and that was when Febris made the threes. McKay off the inbound. Nice finish with his ability. I mean, I don't even think he jumped there. You know, he's got great dexterity in terms of using either hand around that rim and he can finish with the best of them. Coleman. Way off McKay affected that. They're gonna say McKay got a piece of 
Texas has done a great job and where the control is not only in the lead but the fact that the pace that they're forcing the Chippewas to play at now you see it's not a breakneck pace that it was earlier in the game Ramey get to the bucket weaving through traffic and Andrew Jones has checked back into the game Jones playing with four fouls Montgomery step back misfires Montgomery step back misfires You see now Texas has the clock in their favor and the ability to execute in the half court Chippewas are gonna have to figure out a way to speed this game up while being behind by 11 Ramey Draws contact with the whistle oh, and here in the second half He's all but carried this ball club along with Jace Fedris about Texas but getting there no in almost a fourth of what they've done for the season in the line 96 times and this is an area that coach smart has wanted to emphasize that being getting to the line you in order to do that you've got to make contact with people when you've got the ball offensively only six trips from the win against texas a&m to leo to montgomery seven on the shot clock sims got a piece Jones got on the shot clock. Sims got a piece. Jones got the rebound. Fabris, one shy of his career high for three pointers. So a lot, a lot of value in what you just saw happen. We've seen times where Texas has looked to try to score in those situations. Now it's about time, clock, and score, which are all playing to Texas's favor. Jones wants it. Morgan with the board. Is his favor. Jones wants it. Morgan with the board. 13 point Texas lead, two and a half left. Land the dish to McKay. Two on him. McKay's going to force it. And we're still working the officials. And we're still trying to maximize all he can. Season number eight. That's Central Michigan for Keno Davis. It's a team that he had in the past. His answer was point blank recruiting. They have the foundation now. They sold people on playing it on fast paced high score and offense. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people intrigued by that, not making that defense to him. Yeah, you, you mentioned guys like Austin that they had last year. And he's basically had to, re had to retool this roster on the fly. And it just shows, to your point, the kind of recruiting he can do and the impressive it shows. To your point, the kind of recruiting he can do and the impressive group of people he's put together. Ray drops it in the cylinder by Coleman and Jones. Wow, and suddenly a 13-point lead in this game was a nail-biter for three quarters of it. Was a nail-biter for three quarters of it. McKay not done fighting. McKay not done fighting. McKay, Euro step, and one. Yeah, it really is the story of this game. As Jay Severus. Not only the fact that he talked about being focused and making shots, I thought the shots he was taking were better than shots that he's taken in games past where he presses and takes the other by shots. Shots that he's taken in games past where he presses and takes the other by shots. Televised pass to DeLeo. Morgan, too strong. Him putting the bodies on the floor in a travel car. Yeah, putting his teammates' body. Televised pass to DeLeo. Morgan, too strong. Him. Putting the bodies on the floor in a travel car. Yeah, putting his teammates' body. You gotta do that to me, man. What he's saying. Jones heads to the bench. To Leo, quick trigger. In and out. But that's also been a difference in this three-point ball so hard. Another note on Royce Ham. As McKay draws the whistle. One getting the start in the second half.
You know, because there's more shots than usual. And he lived up to the job. And as we're getting closer to conference play, that's got to be close to the top of the list for Texas in terms of rebounding. Because he came into this matchup by the numbers is a poor rebounding team, actually in the negative for rebounding margin this season. And they have the edge 41-24. Obviously, to to still score a lot. Yeah, it'll be different once they get into conference. Maintain this, the starters that he has. Will Jones, uh, the young Jones, Kai Jones play more, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of questions still need to be answered as they approach conference play. Ray Moore, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of questions still need to be answered as they approach conference play. Randy with the answers. Ham wanted it in transition, but Randy. <laughs> With Case on the run, give me the rock. Yeah, I don't think the bigs for Texas are loud enough with these guards. They're such nice guys. They need to force these guards to give it up a little more. Yeah, with Remy, you got to be really loud. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, Ham has the size and strength to be pretty loud. Remy with 20. Bevers with 23. Texas shoots 58% from three-point range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put away all questions, Law, of who the force was with today. <laughs> At least for Texas. Career, career high 20 points for Courtney Randy. And that does it. The best start on the shot is smart continues.